Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about what to do if someone leaves your message just on red. Um, so we're going to talk about why this can happen, what it means. You know, I may do a series about this at some point. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you want to see um, in terms of just what like a, a different attachment style reasoning would be behind why they leave their messages this way um, and what might be going on. But in this video, I just want to talk about what you can do and some really important pointers. So I'm going to assume specifically for this video that we're just talking about dating. Again, maybe I'll do one for friendships, family relationships. It'll, of course, be very different based on principle for these different reasons. Um, but I think the very first and most important thing when it comes to our romantic or dating relationships is to become conscious about what we're expecting and then to become conscious about what is healthy for the quality and state of relationship we're currently in and would like to be in in the future. So what does that all mean? Because it's a lot to unpack. It means that I've had a lot of conversations with people over the years who are anxious, preoccupied, let's say or sometimes fearful avoidance, leaning anxious. And, you know, the, let's say in the first like couple weeks of dating, somebody was really in the, the you know, um, swing of like texting regularly, like maybe texting, you know, throughout the day, almost nonstop throughout the day, like every half hour throughout the day, back and forth. And maybe this is like the way something started off, but maybe it's because it was the summer break for two people who are teachers. Maybe it was because, it's, it was, you know, just after uh, meeting each other and really hitting it off and, and one of you being on vacation, like it could be for so many different reasons um, where somebody's just in that like pursuing phase of a relationship. And then that texting starts to sort of teeter off. And let's say then the texting ends up being that this person's communicating with you four or five times throughout the day, you know, sending four texts throughout the day back and forth. The juxtaposition of going from like talking every half hour, every 15 minutes all day long to then four texts a day may feel very jarring for somebody who has any kind of abandonment wound that really affects them. But the reality is that if somebody's talking to you and sending text messages back and forth, you know, four times throughout the day, five times throughout the day, and let's say there's four or five each that's still like 10 text messages per day. And if you're like early in the dating stage of a relationship, the person's really interested. Like that's quite a bit of texting. So, you know, what we have to be able to do is we have to actually make our expectations conscious instead of the subconscious mind running the show on autopilot and be like, is this enough for this stage of the relationship? And most of the time, you know, it's really going to help us shed light on like what's okay for us and what's not. And it's not just going to be for like, that that kind of dynamic how many texts but also like how far along are we if you're in the first month of no of knowing somebody if you're texting like four or five days a week once or twice you know the, the needle's moving so we want to be able to get really clear about what our expectations are and that would be step one it would be like what am i actually expecting and step two would be what's healthy to expect at this stage of the relationship and also for the person I'm expecting something from, because let's say we, we have a, a, a partner that we're dating or somebody that we've met um, who is extremely busy, right? Who has like a job where they're in back-to-back -back meetings the entire day, or who, you know, is an airline pilot who's taking many flights. Like, you know, you have to look at like the actual dynamic of like, is this person unavailable? Like just purely unavailable based on their work schedule, based on, you know, maybe they have children from a previous relationship, you know, depending on all of that stuff, then we can get a healthy gauge of what's healthy versus unhealthy, what's appropriate versus inappropriate. So that's a huge step one. So that then we have something to work with. Step two, I guess step two is sort of like actually, you know, deciding what the right expectations are after surfacing the expectations first. So we'll call this step three. Um, step three, you then need to consider your needs. You need to take your needs into consideration and ask yourself, like, what do I want from this situation? How much would I like to speak to somebody at this stage of a relationship? What's appropriate for me and what I'm desiring for the future? And and that is what allows you to then decide what you're going to put up with or not, right? If, if you're like, you know, three or four months into dating and the person only texts you two days a week 
And, you know, you're looking for the needle to move and the person's like, you know, hard to get a hold of throughout the rest of the week and only responds to you two days a week. Like, is that okay for you? Is that what you want? You have to assume what you're seeing is probably what you're going to continue to get. But we're still going to go to the next steps, which are going to be about communicating, but you have to be super clear. Like, where am I at? What would I like? And then our next step is to communicate these things. And this means like talking about, you know, it, it doesn't have to be like, you have to say to somebody, you better be texting me every half an hour. It can be something where you're saying, look, frequent and consistent communication is important to me in a relationship. It's like one of the big needs I have, you know, for me, that looks like at least touching base two or three times a day over text, like at least shooting a text in the morning, afternoon, in the evening. And, you know, that's what I'm really needing. That's important to me. And if you see the person show up and, and be doing a pretty good job, and maybe they only do two in a day, one day when they're busy or whatever it might be, you know, you're seeing the needle moving, right? So you're seeing this like appropriate measure taking place. If you see that somebody doesn't show up at all, this brings us to then step five, which is we have to show up to enforce our boundaries. And we do this not out of like punishment, not out of being rude, not out of trying to make a point or be spiteful. We do this out of self-respect. We do this out of like being able to show up in the relationship to ourselves and honor what's important to us, honor what our needs are, honor that if we're going to invest our time in a relationship, that we have to be able and willing to you know, take our precious time and invest it in the right relationships and the places that are going to get our needs met when we communicate them and when we show up and talk about these things. So hopefully this makes a whole lot of sense. If you want to do a deeper dive into like boundaries and communication, you can check out for free for seven days or seven day free trial. I highly recommend checking out our boundaries course and our conflict resolution course. And that will really help you with those steps four and five. If you want to know how to phrase things and, and show up and communicate things effectively and, and really dig into that. So um, you can click the link below if you want to check that out. Um, thank you so much for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I would really, really appreciate it. And I will see you in tomorrow's video.